Hi, it's V with Crafting Daily Dose, and today I have a shaker card for you to celebrate the upcoming new year. It's got this fun hourglass. Now, if you don't recognize the hourglass die, it's because Stampin' Up! doesn't have one, but we do have a cloche die, and I'll show you how to use it to create this card. So let's get started. These are the pieces for the card. It's a slimline card and it will fit in a regular business envelope. Now, slimline cards can be any number of different sizes, but I'm using one of the most common. So my card base is going to be three and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches in height. And I've got two pieces of basic gray cardstock that are the same. When you're starting out with a full sheet of cardstock, you're going to be using that entire eight and a half inch width and cutting it down at three and a half and then again at three and a half inches and then turning it this way to get these pieces shown here. I also have a piece of the Simply Elegant Designer series paper that is the same dimensions. So it's three and a half inches wide, eight and a half inches in height. Now the back side is really pretty with all of the spoiling, but I have a lot of other shine going on in the card, so I'm choosing to use the more neutral side instead. This piece of basic white cardstock is going to be for my message on the back of the card, and it is a little bit smaller. It's three inches by eight inches. I have a piece of window sheet, which is the clear acetate right here. It is three inches by six inches. And I have a little scrap of basic gray cardstock. I'm going to be stamping part of my sentiment onto that and then fussy cutting it out. So the exact dimensions don't really matter as long as the sentiment fits. I'm going to be using the word happy from the Biggest Wish stamp set, but if you don't have that one, you probably have something else in your stash that could also work. The main die that I need is the cloche die. And then I have some additional die cuts. These streamers were cut from the birthday cake die set out of silver and gold foil. And then I use the playful alphabets die cut to cut out the numbers for the year. I'm going to need foam for this shaker card in order to lift up the panel and give room for my shaker elements to move around. And for that, I'm using the foam adhesive sheets. I've got a couple of them here that I'm going to cut down. If you have dimensionals instead or the foam adhesive strips, those could also work because they are the same interchangeable thickness, but these are going to be easier to work with. If you wanted to create even more freedom of movement for the sequence, you could do two layers of foam, but I'm just going to do one for this card. Inside my shaker, I'm going to be using some of these subtle shimmer sequins. Um, this is all I have left, so there's just a little bit here. I'm also using the metallics from the sequins for everything. It comes in a different type of container. I just transferred it in here so that it's easier for me to use. And then adding some extra shine with the rhinestone basic jewels. I'll be doing some heat embossing with that happy sentiment, and so I'm using Versamark ink along with anti-static powder and gold embossing powder. Now you could definitely leave this back panel plain with plenty of room for your message. If you happen to have gotten the March 2021 paper pumpkin, then go back and consider this sentiment for it. This is the one that I'm going to be using. It says, all the best for a happy, healthy, and prosperous year. And I'll be using that with basic gray ink. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to stamp on my scrap of basic gray cardstock. I'm going to put a little anti-static powder first since I'm going to be doing heat embossing. I'm stamping with my clear Versamark ink. I'll add gold embossing powder and then I'll preheat my heat tool and go ahead and melt the embossing powder. Once my sentiment is all set, I'll go ahead and fussy cut it out with my snips. I start out with a more rough cut and then go back for the details. 
Notice that I'm moving my paper more than my scissors. Now I'll stamp that message panel on the back. And then this is going to get adhered onto one of the card bases. I'm using stamp and seal, but you could also use the multi-purpose glue. Now I'm going to adhere the designer series paper to the other card base and I'm using the broad tip of the glue for this one. Now I'm going to be cutting out this piece with the cloche die and I'm going to be placing it so that it is centered horizontally and it's going to be about two inches from this bottom edge. So I can use a ruler or I can use my grid paper to estimate the two inches. Each one of these is one quarter of an inch so I'm counting up eight blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the bottom of my cloche is going to be right around here. Centering that and then I'm going to hold it in place with a little bit of washi tape and then I'll go ahead and cut it So here's what that looks like so far and now I'm going to take the cloche die again But this time I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to overlap it a little bit with my previous cut and you can just kind of eyeball it here I'll give you a closer look of how much overlap there is, and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. And then once you remove this second die cut, you get your hourglass shape. Now my opening here is about three quarters of an inch. If you wanted a more narrow opening, you could place your second die cut so that there's a little bit less vertical overlap, but I'm happy with this placement. Now there are a couple of different ways to prepare the foam that we're going to need for our shaker card. One way is just to cut strips of that foam adhesive sheet and you're going to lay it around the opening on the back side of course um, and you're going to form sort of a cage around that opening. making sure that you're going to fill in these gaps with strips of foam and that's going to create a space for you to put the sequence. The other way to prepare the foam is to cut this shape into the foam itself like this and I decided to use this method since the die makes it easy to do. I'm going to first show you how I cut down these pieces of adhesive sheet. So Right now, my piece is four and a half inches by four and one quarter inches. This is how it starts out. I'm going to keep this four and one quarter inch height, but I want to trim the width down to three and one quarter inches. So I'm going to put it at three and one quarter inches. And I'm using this darker cutting blade. Now, because my foam is thicker, it's not going to cut all the way through, but it gives me a head start. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this back. And then on the other side, you can see that that creates a crease, which is going to help to be a guideline. So I'm going to put this back at three and a quarter inches, and I can check myself to make sure that this crease lines up with the cutting track. Once I've made that second cut, I can easily separate out the pieces. And now this foam piece is going to be the support underneath 
the bottom part of my card. And you can see on the back side that I've left myself a little bit of a gap around the edges. Now what I'm going to do is once it's centered how I want it to be, I'm going to use the pointy end of my Take Your Pick tool and I'm going to trace along this opening. You can also use a pin or a pencil or a pen. We're really just looking for something that's got a little bit of a point. So as I trace along, I'm basically cutting into the backing of the foam. So you can see that I've created sort of scratch cuts on the release paper. Once those marks are in place, I can use them as a visual guide to place my die, but also I can move my die around and I can actually feel when it fits into that groove. Once I'm happy with the placement, I'm going to use some washi tape to keep it in place. And now this is release paper, which is meant to not stick. And so I'm going to take my washi tape and I'm going to wrap it around the edge to make it more secure. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. The foam cuts really beautifully. And then you're going to end up with a piece that is the perfect support for our front panel because it's going to fit just like that. You can see it here from the back. Now, if my cut got a little bit wonky and any of these edges are poking out, I can go ahead and trim them down. I also want to create a piece for the top part as well. Now I can use the same technique to create a piece for the top side. The difference here is that this piece is a little bit shorter as you can see. So it starts out as three and one quarter by three and three quarters of an inch. I traced out the shape and used that as a guide for placing my die. And so now I have a piece that fits in at the top as well as one that fits in at the bottom. And then there's a little bit of a border all the way around. Now, if I want to make things look even more polished, I can bring in a gray Stampin' Blends marker so that I can color in the edge of this so that if the card is viewed at an angle, you're going to see gray and not the white foam. I don't have basic gray in my blends, but I do have this dark gray granite, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. Next, I'm going to use Stampin' Seal to adhere my window sheet. Now I'll go ahead and put my foam adhesive sheet on. Now remember the bottom part is going to have a wider border than the top part, so make sure that you're using the correct one. I'm lining up that bottom edge first and pulling off more release paper as I go. The sides are a little bit flexible, so you can mold them around a little bit if you need to.
Now remember, you can just use strips of your adhesive sheet to create a perimeter around your die cut, but since we already have our other foam piece ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and use that. Same thing, I'm going to line up the straight edge first. And then if I had miscalculated and there was any kind of a gap here, I'd want to cut small pieces of foam adhesive sheet to fill in that gap. I don't want there to be any spaces for my sequence to get trapped into. I can see that I was a little bit off here, so the foam comes closer to this left edge than to the other side. So I'm going to flip it over and check and make sure that I can't see the foam from the front, and that looks okay. Now, if I have any little bit of foam peeking out from behind this window sheet, I can use the pointy end of my Take Your Pick tool and just kind of push it back. Or if I don't have this, I can even just use my fingers. That foam is pretty malleable. So you can just kind of squeeze it back. Once I'm happy with the foam, I'm ready to go ahead and fill this with my sequence. I've got some anti-static powder here, the same that I use for heat embossing, and I'm just going to go ahead and dab a little bit on. This is going to help make sure that the sequins don't stick to any stray adhesive, and also cut back on the static so that the sequins can move more freely. Once I've put in the amount of sequence that I want, I can go ahead and adhere that back panel on. Now, I can use my fingers to sort of square up the edges, or if I have a box or the scoring board, I can use that as a guide. So I can push this card base up against this corner so that I know that everything is nice and square, and I will start to peel away some of this release paper. I'll take my other card panel and I will also push it into the corner. And then I'll gradually peel away the release paper. If I keep pushing the panels up against the edges of my scoring board, I know that everything is going to be square and lined up. Don't be afraid to press firmly. You want to make sure that you have a good seal between the foam and the back card base. We're ready for the final assembly. Remember that this wider margin is at the bottom. I'll be using the multi-purpose glue to add the decorations.
For a finishing touch, I'll add some of the rhinestone basic jewels. I decided that I want to try to change the angle of this word happy here. I'm not sure if I can do it, but I'm going to give it a try. I'm either going to make it straight or put it at a more obvious angle instead of this kind of slight angle that I have right now. To do that, I'm going to be using the spatula end of the Take Your Pick tool. So right now I have the pointy tip on. I'm going to go ahead and turn it towards the right. That's to uh, unlock it. And then I'll flip it around, take this cover off, and insert the pointy end into the handle of the tool. And so now I've got my spatula end, and then I will rotate this towards the left to lock it in place. The spatula helps me to kind of get underneath there and see if I can pry that apart. If I hear any ripping, I might decide to stop, but so far I seem to be getting it okay. Okay, there we go. So let me decide either straight or more of an angle. I think I'm going to go with straight because I still have a little bit of glue residue here and if I put it straight, that's going to hide it. So there's our finished card. There's plenty of room for a message on the back. And then on the front, we've used the cloche dies in a different way to create the hourglass shaker. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this dose of creativity. If you get a chance to try out this project, I would love to see it. So remember to tag me or share it in my Facebook group. You can find a link to that and all of my other links in the description box below. I look forward to seeing you the next time, and until then, have a great day!